Hi everybody, welcome to my 15th video on axial bars. In this video, I'm going to be talking about thermal effects on axial bars. If you want to know something else about axial bars, feel free to check out any of my other axial bar videos. So when we're talking about axial bars in the real world, thermal effects are very important. All right, everywhere there's some temperature, temperature is always changing, material is always expanding, contracting. All right, it's a very important realistic application of axial bar mechanics. So I've got some real world examples here for you. The first one you all might or should be familiar with are expansion joints. All right, that's that clickety, clickety, clickety sound every time you drive over a bridge. All right, basically, in the summertime, the bridge heats up, it gets actually longer, and these gaps in here, they get smaller as the bridge fills them up. In the winter, it shrinks, you know, those gaps widen. Just basically makes it so that the changing temperature doesn't lead to any crazy stresses in the bridge and cause it to buckle or deform or anything unhealthy like that. All right, so my next example here, we got the ever popular Eiffel Tower. All right, so this was built way back in the day and it's made, I believe, completely out of iron. Okay, so you can imagine in the summertime when it gets hot, this thing is gonna get bigger. As a matter of fact, the very tip of the tower grows about 17 centimeters in the summer. All right, that's a considerable amount. Now I'll take my ruler here, and I'll see if I can find 17 centimeters. That's right there. All right, so if I put my hand here, all right, that's about as big as my hand. It gets about the length of my hand bigger in the summertime. All right, and all the bolts in there would need to be designed for that because if the temperature is increasing, it's getting longer. It's going to want to shear off, so you got to have all sorts of connections and things to make sure that doesn't happen. All right, that's the Eiffel Tower. And also, your railroad tracks. You can imagine the summer they get really hot, and this summer here is really hot, and to the point where this tracks are to do some serious buckling because the bar tends to get longer when it's hot outside. Okay, so that's why they put, you know, little gaps in between the tracks, just to make sure this thing type of thing doesn't happen, or they like, you know, put special other alloys and things in there so that you can counteract this sort of thermal expansion problem, because you can imagine your train would have a, you know, a small issue driving over that. Okay, so in the spirit of this question, or this example, I've made a question here. That we'll get to after I explain to you the math of thermal expansion. We'll do an example on railroad tracks. So, in order to get like a mathematical description of thermal effects, it's actually pretty straightforward. It's noticed from doing it experiments or just looking in nature that the strain in a material due to an increase in temperature. It's proportional to some is proportional to the change in temperature times some constant. It's that simple. You change the temperature, you're gonna develop a strain. It's proportional to some constant. Alright? Let's quickly find the units of this constant. So expressing it just as something by itself, it's strain by delta t. So remember strain is no units, delta t it's degrees Celsius, degrees Fahrenheit, Kelvin. I just like to use degrees Celsius. So alpha is one over degrees Celsius or Celsius negative one. Okay, now we know that strain is equal to delta by L. So the amount by which it's gotten bigger over the initial length, substituting this into there, we get delta equals to alpha delta t l. This is the equation we want to talk about. All right, we have a length of bar. It's l long, and it's getting bigger by the amount delta. Okay, now it's also useful to have a differential form of this equation because you can imagine temperature effects are not always like discrete. You can imagine a bar that's like slowly getting heated up more toward this end and not so much toward this end. 
actually have an example of this in one of my next videos. You might want to check that out. But just intuitively, you can imagine this L shrinking down all the way to a very, very tiny size, a differential length, dx. Now this dx, you give it some temperature, that little segment is going to increase by an amount, d delta. So you just rewrite this equation, d delta is equal to alpha delta t dx. There we go, those are the two equations that we're going to be using in the future. Okay, so back to our railroad tracks. Let's just solve a quick, you know, relatively simple question that has to do with the spacing. What's the spacing got to be? Or how big should the gaps be between railroad tracks if the temperature in the summer is 40 degrees in the winter if it drops to negative 25? All right, assume each rail is 12 meter long and the coefficient of thermal expansion is 12 times 10 to the minus 6. All right, so you can imagine we're laying out a series of bars. All right, the one bar would be like this. We have a gap. I'll draw it noticeably bigger. All right, and we have a bunch of bars just going on and on like this. There we go. And this distance here is the distance we want. Okay. I'm going to call that just delta for our case. Now, if you imagine this bar sitting by itself, we heat it up, it's going to expand. Okay. Now, it's not like this end is fixed, so the whole thing kind of scooches over this way. No, it's sitting by itself, so the only place it doesn't move is the very center. All right, so we're going to take that to be our, our origin, if you will, of displacement. So the initial length of the bar then, as it goes under thermal expansion, we're just going to look at half of this, 6 meters, all right, half of 12. And this is going to expand up to half of this distance here, delta by 2. All right, and we're going to assume that we're just going to let these pieces touch each other, all right, when it's in the summertime and it's hot. We're not going to develop any sort of stress because these things are pushing against each other. Just want to have them touch and then retract again. All right, so we can write this bit of displacement as just pretending, you know, this little piece here, this bar, six meters long, that's elongating delta by two. All right, what does delta have to be with this change in temperature? Okay, so delta by two equals, you know, alpha delta TL. Alpha, we got 12 times 10 to the minus six. Delta T, that's 40 minus minus 25. That's 65 degrees. And then the length of this piece, that's six meters. All right, solving for delta. Maybe it would be useful to call this something else like X or something because we're reserving delta for just the displacement. But if you pretend that this piece here is fixed and this piece expands out, that is the delta. Okay, so solving this equation here, we get delta equal to zero, zero zero nine three six meters or delta is equal to nine point three six millimeters all right and that's a highly reasonable answer all right take my trusty ruler here all right nine point three six millimeters i'll be about up there right there so i take my pinky that's about that babe now i haven't been down to the railroad tracks lately but that seems a reasonable size to space the tracks out so that they don't mash into each other in the summertime. All right, so this uh, is a brief introduction to thermal effects. And from experiment, it's found that the strain is proportional to the increase in temperature by a, a coefficient, it has units of per Celsius or per degree. And then rewriting this in terms of strain, we get this equation. And then we also intuitively developed a yeah, differential form of this equation by looking at a differential piece that's going under some sort of heating. And then we did a quick example illustrating this by calculating the spacing of a railroad track. 
All right, you guys, hope you enjoyed this video. Thanks so much for watching, and we'll see you in the next few videos where we work through some of these examples.